Well, when the war in Iraq ends and attention turns to rebuilding the country, the demand for wood and other construction materials is likely to soar. A number of lumber companies could stand to benefit. One of them is Weyerhaeuser. It's our stock of the day. We bring in our stock editor, Joya Das, with more on the company. Joya? Hey, guys. We're talking about the Washington-based company, Weyerhaeuser, and the company's made news on several fronts. But let me tell you just some details about the, uh, the assets, the asset holdings of the company. They manage about 8 million acres of timberland, mainly in the southern U.S., as well as the Pacific Northwest. The company also has cutting licenses in about 35 million acres in Canada, also has a number of holdings in other countries. In the meantime, though, the company also has some issues facing it, one of which, as we mentioned at the top of the show here, is the U.S.-Canada trade wars. Don't forget that the global economy is also one factor that figures into the uh, business at Weyerhaeuser. But, as you just said, the Iraq rebuild could be a boon for business once everything is said and done. Let's just take a quick check of the 52-week high and 52-week low on this stock. It's traded as high as 68.09 and traded as low as 37.35 and the current price stands right around right smack in the middle you might say right at 48 dollars before we go i want to show you this chart just plotting warehouser compared to the s p 500 as well as a number of its competitors just over the last year to give you a sense that you know warehouser stock has pretty much tracked the s p 500 in fact it's even outperformed it since late last year and has also outperformed one of its competitors georgia pacific guys Okay, John, stick with us as we get more on Weyerhaeuser from an analyst who follows the company. Paul Latta of McAdams Wright Reagan joins us from Seattle. Welcome to the Money Gang. Thank you. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Weyerhaeuser in the context of the other companies that you, you follow. It's always hard to understand when we, we, we follow these companies what's unique about them. You cover the biggest ones, Weyerhaeuser, Boise, Cascade, Louisiana, Pacific uh, as the big ones. What, what's Weyerhaeuser do that the others don't? Well, a few things. Uh, Weyerhaeuser, I think, is usually regarded as the 500-pound gorilla in the industry. Uh, it is quite a bit larger. Uh, it also has a, a little bit more focus on the wood side of the business compared to, say, an international paper, which is a little bit more paper-focused. The uh, company is really well-renowned for its um, presence uh, in the fee timber business in particular. And, uh, and as you mentioned earlier, it does have tremendous timber holdings as well as uh, substantial acreage up in Canada that it manages. So uh, that's, that's the main distinction between Weyerhaeuser and its peers. Well, Paul, what's the better side of the business to be on uh, in, in terms of stability of pricing? Is it the, the, uh, the wood side or, or the, the process paper side? Well, I think uh, in the last... 10 years or so, the wood side has definitely been the better side to, to be on, especially uh, on that uh, feed timber business. That's, uh, that saw a tremendous boost back in the spotted owl days in the early early 90s, and it's been a tremendous source of profitability for a man, many of the paper and forest products companies. Is there an advantage to being integrated so you got exposure to both? Uh, it was a very tough time in the early 90s if you did not own your own timber. Uh, if you ran a lumber mill, for example, and didn't own your own timber, uh, timber got very scarce back then. Uh, things have changed a little bit since then. Timber's a little bit more plentiful, and we do have some higher growth species that are reaching maturity. Uh, but it's still a profitable business to be in. So is this contention right that the housing boom in the last year has not necessarily been a boon for warehouses business? I feel like I read that somewhere. Yeah, oddly, uh, it's a bit counterintuitive because the, um, it's mainly related to this uh, softwood uh, lumber dispute we have with Canada and the countervailing duties. Uh, it's had a, uh, a bit of a, a backwards effect. Uh, you, you would think that duties would, uh, would shut down imports out of Canada, but in fact what's happened is the Canadian producers have actually accelerated production in order to prove to the WTO that their uh, production costs are in fact low. And, uh, and so it's had a, a bit of a, a backwards effect. So we have a tremendous amount of lumber supply floating around right now, and the prices are actually at fairly low levels. Paul, take us through your analysis on this stock. We had a chart up as uh, Joy was introducing you that looked at the performance versus the S&P 500, performance versus Georgia Pacific, to give us some idea of, of how it's been performing competitively. But what do you look at as you figure out where the right place for the stock to trade is? Um, I usually look at uh, peak earnings potential. I also look at mid-cycle earnings potential and just trade off multiples of those. Uh, I look at Weyerhaeuser as you know, a good, strong peak year. could earn 6 or $7 a share, perhaps a little bit more, depending on the strength of the cycle. In a trough year, uh, last year was a tough year. They earned $1.34, I believe, so pretty close to a dollar. Uh, so a mid-cycle earnings, I would guess around $4. The stock would typically trade around 12 times mid-cycle, which would be about where it's at right now. Um, I think, you know, if the stock pushes into the 60s, it's, it might be time to lighten up a little bit. If it pushes down into the low 40s or maybe into the 30s, it might be time to build some position in it. So how much does Weyerhaeuser stand to benefit from this rebuild of Iraq, if anything at all? Well, um, 
uh, I think the wood products business, uh, um, you know, historically in any sort of economic recovery, the wood products business is the first to benefit. And, and the thinking is usually that as uh, Greenspan lowers rates, uh, that will flow through to higher housing starts, which will result in uh, higher wood products demand. But uh, realistically, housing starts are already at fairly elevated levels, and mortgage rates are already fairly low. And so uh, I think, though, that you still will get some benefit. But oddly, I think it's going to come out of the paper side this time. Uh, paper is a little bit more of a global business. And if you look at global business and consumer confidence, it's been fairly well depressed as a result of the war. If you could get the war behind us and get some improvement in confidence, both business and consumer, I think that will flow through to the paper industry. Uh, it may not be right away. Uh, but you know, we have a situation in the last few years where there's been very little in the way of new capacity added for paper. And so uh, that, combined with the weakening dollar, uh, it does set up for a nice paper cycle, uh, looking at maybe one to two years. Paul, thanks for joining us. Good to talk to you. Thank you. Paul Latta is the Assistant Director of Research at McAdams Wright and Reagan in Seattle, Washington.